Seven Hidden Facts About Mary Magdalene You Did Not Know The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John make it abundantly clear that Mary Magdalene was a key disciple of Jesus Christ. But who really was Mary Magdalene? A former prostitute? A wealthy financier? A former demon-possessed adulteress? What can we learn about this woman from biblical and extra-biblical sources? The answers to these questions will surprise you. In this episode, we are going to look at seven things you did not know about Mary Magdalene. And if you watch till the end, you learn about the special relationship Jesus had with Mary Magdalene. Before we continue, please take a moment to support us by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. It will help us reach our goal of spreading the good news of salvation bought and paid for with the blood of Jesus. Let's get started. Number 1. Prominence Mary Magdalene is much more prominent than she is given credit for. In terms of appearance in the scripture, Mary Magdalene is more prominent than many of the other disciples of Jesus Christ. While the exact number may vary slightly depending on the Bible translation, Mary Magdalene is mentioned by name at least 12 times in the New Testament. Her name appears more than Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Bartholomew, Thaddeus, and Simon the Zealot. That's more than a good number of Jesus' disciples. Why is this significant? Because name and naming matters in the scripture. A careful reading of the scriptures shows that being named is important. Naming is tied to relevance and recognition. In the book of Genesis, when God created man, he gave him a name, Adam, and one of the first jobs he gave Adam was to name everything God put under his care. As it is the case with Peter and John, it seems that how often a person is named indicate their significance. Secondly, we also see that the order in which characters are named indicates their importance. This is the case with Mary, because almost every time she is listed with a group of people, her name is mentioned first. It reminds us of how Peter is always mentioned first among the disciples. Being mentioned first clearly communicates a sense of significance, possibly even leadership. This then leads us to the question, why is Mary Magdalene such a prominent figure in the Bible? What makes her so special? Well, there is actually a few possible reasons. Number 2. Financial Support for Jesus Historical data and research shows that Mary Magdalene financially supported Jesus. As Luke tells us, the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support the ministry of Jesus out of their own means. This is not surprising, because rabbis or teachers of the word didn't receive salary. They relied upon the hospitality and support of their followers for subsistence. But this also gives us further insight into Mary Magdalene. It means that Mary comes from a privileged background. She wasn't scraping by to make ends meet. She had the ability to support and follow Jesus around. How was she able to do that given the restrictions women generally faced at the time? It is possible that she was married to someone wealthy. Some would argue that it may not be possible for a married woman to be as involved as she was with the ministry, but so was Joanna, who the Bible clearly says was married to a man who was the manager of Herod's household. It is also possible that Mary's husband passed away or no longer wanted her. After all, she was said to be possessed by seven demons before she met Jesus. It could also be that her money comes from family inheritance. Whatever the case, she had enough to support Jesus' ministry. Number 3. Mary Magdalene prepared Jesus for burial with ointment long before he was crucified. Perhaps one of the most profound actions of Mary Magdalene is the anointing of Jesus Christ at Bethany. As the Bible reports, while Jesus was in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. 
Why this waste? They asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. When Jesus heard this, he said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Matthew 26 verses 6 to 12. Jesus' statement suggests his knowledge that Mary is aware of what is happening at a deeper level than the other disciples. The word Christ means the anointed one. Mary Magdalene's anointing of Jesus highlights her priestly and midwife role in Jesus' transition through death. That is why Jesus forever acknowledged her by saying to the disciples, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. Matthew 26 verse 13 Number 4. Witness at Crucifixion and Resurrection Mary Magdalene is prominent in Scripture for another very important reason. She was one of the few people present at both the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. While the Synoptic Gospels do not necessarily agree on who exactly was present at each of these events, all of them agree that Mary Magdalene was there at both events. She was the key witness to the death and resurrection of the Messiah. It is noteworthy that she was chosen for this role, especially because the testimonies of women weren't trusted at that time. A woman's testimony was regarded as so worthless that they weren't even allowed in Jewish courts. So, if you're the Gospel writers, and your goal is to convince the world that Jesus is the Messiah, why would you make your key witness to His resurrection the critical proof of Jesus' divinity? A woman. The only reason they would do that is because that is what happened. It is because it is the truth. This is for those who claim the Bible is a fiction. Here was an opportunity to embellish the truth. Yet, the writers of the Gospel stuck to the truth. An inconvenient truth. But the truth matters. Mary was there at the empty tomb. She was the first to witness that Jesus had risen. He wasn't dead. He was alive forever. And that because of this moment, we too can have eternal life. You may have been made to feel insignificant, unworthy, like you don't count and your voice does not matter. Then you can relate to Mary Magdalene and most of the women of her generation. Yet, even though the world may see you as insignificant, less than valuable, and unworthy, God certainly see you differently. God sees you as an instrument and important part of His plan for the universe. Number 5. Apostle of Apostles Mary Magdalene was the first witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thus, she received a most important assignment from her teacher. Jesus said to Mary, Go to my brethren, and say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. John 20 verse 17. When Mary fulfilled this instruction, she became the Apostle to the Apostle, the first bearer of the good news. Number 6. Cleansed of Demonic Possession You may be familiar with the fact that Mary was possessed by demons, but based on Luke's account, it is clear that Mary wasn't just possessed, she was very possessed. We learn that Jesus cured Mary Magdalene of seven demonic spirit. We don't know exactly what Mary's symptoms were or how she was acting when she met Jesus. All we know is that scripture tells us that she was possessed by demons, she was not well and she needed help. Some modern scholars have said that what Mary was cured of may have been psychological problems represented by the seven deadly sins of pride, greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony, and sloth. Whatever the case, after her encounter with Jesus, Mary became a better person capable of being a witness to the greatest miracle of all time, as well as becoming the Apostle of Apostles, the Messenger of Messengers. Jesus transformed the life of Mary Magdalene forever. He freed her from the clutches of demons, both psychological and spiritual. As if that was not enough, he died for her sins and finalized her redemption. The story of Mary Magdalene is a powerful reminder to each one of us of just how much Jesus has done for us. He has saved us from our sin. He has rescued us and gives us the opportunity for an entirely new and eternal life. He sure deserves our full commitment, just as Mary did.
Number 7. Mary Magdalene was not a prostitute. As reported in the book of Luke 7 verses 36 to 50, one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to his house, and he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. And behold, a woman of the city, who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at a table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment, and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. Many have used this passage to tag Mary Magdalene as a prostitute, a woman of the city. Pope Gregory I, in 591 AD, in homily 33, popularized the notion that the woman in the passage was Mary Magdalene, and that she was a prostitute. Since then, many have repeated the same claim. It was not until the 1940s that the Catholic Church formally revised their stance to say that Mary Magdalene was not a prostitute. But by then, it was too late for many. Mary, yet again, have her values deliberately maligned and diminished by men. This gross misinterpretation of the scripture is a reminder that we must always approach the Bible with humility. We have to distinguish between what we assume and what scripture actually says. For example, does the Bible say that Adam and Eve ate an apple or a piece of fruit? Were they tempted by a snake or serpent? Were there three magi or just three gifts? Was Mary a prostitute? Or were we just told by a Pharisee that she was? I mean, if we're not careful, we'll read our beliefs into Scripture rather than letting Scripture inform our beliefs. The second thing this story reminds is for us to be wary of telling a story that is not our own. We must be wary of stereotyping others and avoid believing and regurgitating stories manufactured and seen through the biased lens of others. This story is especially for you if you have been stereotyped and discriminated against because of your race, gender, belief, and financial status. Perhaps you have been tagged with bad reputation from the life you previously lived or that people thought you lived. Either way, I want to remind you that your identity and value is not based on what someone else says or think about you, but what God says about you. Your identity comes from Jesus. He is the one who declares who you truly are. He is the one who gives you a new life and a new name. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Amen.